Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as the Khmer Empire, where we're going for a tourism victory. We have 12 out of the needed 400 tourists, and the way that we're going to reduce the total amount of tourists that we need is by killing Japan. We have a huge army over here, and we're just about to get oil online, so we can actually upgrade these guys to artillery. That'll be an expensive and slow affair that'll involve a lot of pillaging. But it is something that we will be able to pull off over a period of time. Now, we're also in the process of building up our theater squares, getting things like amphitheaters, and generally also settling some cities over here in the east so that we can set up for some national parks. That's kind of the, the long-term game plan, um, generally speaking, is to set up for some builders and stuff like that for national parks. Um, I haven't fully planned out the land over here, but I'm quite happy with the setup that we have. I, when I start getting settlers in this direction, I'll start planning cities, but I know that I'm going to put national parks here, all that stuff. And I think it would also be a good idea for me to maybe try to get a city like over here, um, potentially um, getting access to all of this oil, as well as all of these whales, and the ability to trade with Portugal and Korea, if I don't kill Korea, um, would be quite nice. The ability to trade with them would open up the option to get a tourism boost, up to 75% in the late game. I can't show you the tech, but there is a tech that gives you an additional 50% from trade routes. So, you know, there's a lot of options there. Now, Surabaya is a city that I have captured um, via the method of cultural assimilation. Uh, we definitely need to build ourselves the Eiffel Tower. So that's going to be, I would say, our major priority in the city of Angkor Wat. I'm going to tell the city to focus on production and I'm going to see what I can do in terms of getting production to that city. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, um, but I will come up with something. I'll probably plug in the cart that speeds up wonder production and I'll see what else I can do to get the production up in here. Maybe I could crack out a quick water park. The water park would be worth what, like uh, an amenity plus another two amenities. We could make that work. I probably shouldn't have built a supply convoy here. We'll figure it out. I'm going to chop here because that will finish the workshop here faster. I'll quickly crank out that overflow production into another builder. Because again, remember, I need to start retooling my land. Um, and that's exactly what we're in the process of doing. Anywhere I have flat land with the possibility of becoming a, uh, a good location, for uh, seaside resorts. I'm trying to up the appeal by building forests nearby. I've also finally taken out a huge amount of the barbarians that were hiding up in the north. There's still some kind of clinging to life in a few different areas, but I would say generally I've managed to defeat the vast majority of the barbarians that were kind of hiding out in the north. I'm also chopping tiles I would not have considered chopping previously. And uh, the main objective is to open up the potential for seaside resorts. I am looking for the radio tech, which will allow me to build seaside resorts. It's, it's one of these two technologies here. I'm hoping that it's this one. It's not the end of the world if it's this one. It just means it's slightly delayed. The factory in Lingapura isn't particularly important because if we take a moment to look at the city overlap here, it only hits two cities. So unless I were willing to conquer Kabul and Singapore, it doesn't seem particularly important for me to build up the coal power plant, which is why I'm going to focus instead on getting things like traders, builders and settlers uh, in that order to try to get control of... There's a bit of potential land over here to the west. And the thing about Civ is the more land you hold, the better a position you're in. And that is just true at all points of the game. Um, land is the fundamental currency of power here. Ooh, a Hammurabi artifact is quite good. It's an industrial era one. I don't think he... Did he survive the industrial era? I don't even remember. Hammurabi, of course, is Babylon, who I killed. We have managed to get conservation, so we can start building national parks. And if we built a national park, it would reveal where the radio tech was. Um, but now that we have conservation, we should start to think about if we want to go for... I think we definitely want to go for the Crystal Redentor. Um, this will increase the tourism from Seaside Resorts by 100%. That's going to be a lot of tourism across my empire. So I definitely want that. I also need to keep an eye out. Um, when this great engineer goes, I would really like to get Shah Jahan if he's available. I know we're in the modern era, but... Um, yeah, if I, if I could get Shah Jahan, it would be amazing. I mean, it would be amazing to get Nikola Tesla too, but Alvar Alto or Shah Jahan would be amazing. So I'm willing to spend a little bit of faith on those if they if they do indeed come up. Holy shit, Russia is making 52 great engineer points per year. They must be running projects. There's no way they're not. Uh, we could get uranium. No, I think we pick up chemistry here because we want radio, which is almost certainly this technology right here. I'm 99% sure of that. We have completed the harbor in Haradum. Uh, this city could use a builder and a little bit of uh, retooling, but it's not super important. But getting those trade routes online is. 
I'll pop you to here. And now we are officially what I would consider to be sort of basically ready to declare the war. We've got a great general in position. We've got an observation balloon in position. The only thing we're missing is our second great general and the supply convoy. That would be a really nice pickup if we could get that over there. But I think when it comes to war and now, it's like a kind of now or never type situation. So I think I will be declaring the war next turn. I think that would be ideal. So I'm repairing tiles, I'm planting forests, I'm trying to improve the quality of, or the appeal of the tiles in my empire. I think I'll take another Hammurabi. That's another industrial Hammurabi. I'm trying to look at where the good appeal is in this area. Anything, I don't want to settle on things with two appeal because if I can get the Eiffel Tower, those will eventually become seaside resorts. So I think this is a good spot right here. It actually is a decent city. Because, like, I could go aqueduct and a holy site in here somewhere. And I could even do, like, an aqueduct holy site and then put farms in between them. And then these would be, like, S-tier uber farms. Because they would have plus three food, plus one faith on them. Um, although that would be kind of a long-term return on investment for this city. But these cities will probably never reach these zeniths of their production. But these are kind of, like, hope hopeful goals that we could reach. I decided also on this little island, I'm going to go ahead and harvest the deer and get traders and builders from this city uh, back and forth instead of putting a camp on that tile. I think the camp was a cool idea, but I don't think it was necessary. I have the money now, I hope, to buy a builder in this city so I can get my first copy of oil. And now all of my money needs to be going towards upgrading my army. So I'm going to take out retainers and I'm going to go ahead and plug in force modernization to make it cheaper to upgrade my units. Um, all the rest of these feel very necessary. I would love to be able to plug in more cards. Um, there is something to be said of going for fascism. Fascism would allow more military cards. Uh, so yeah, let's go for fascism. We can we can use this to kill our enemy. The plus five combat strength will make the war go a lot easier, honestly. Uh, and I suppose what I'll do to take advantage of my cheaper faith purchasing is I will start just purchasing a few naturalists like for now, because you, you never want to go back to a government that you stepped out of. So I'm just going to spend all my faith, not on missionaries, damn it, uh, on, on naturalists. The idea being that I just get a whole bunch of these naturalists for extremely cheap. Um, so I think that should be enough for now. Like, it's a decent amount. I probably won't find enough land for that many. Um, but I know, I know for a fact that I got a bunch of naturalists for, you know, a cheaper amount. Okay, let's go ahead and declare the war in Japan. The Cassis Belly will be a golden age war. So we'll have a 75% reduction in grievances with Japan, which means we will not annoy other players as much as we normally would. Now, one of the key parts of this war will be generating gold to upgrade our armies. Uh, because right now, we don't have the, the gold to upgrade our armies. We, we also don't have the oil, but that is a problem we are solving with our builders right now. Um, and so key strategy is I'm at war with Spain. Now, can I find someone who is not friends with Japan? I'm going to get her to join my Golden Age War. Oh my God, like the Steam interface updated and now it starts playing uh, the noises again. So I'm going to get her to join my war. And then I would like to get an alliance with her. So I have to pick up diplomatic service. I kind of forgot about this, right? Wait, which one is the one that gives you alliances? No, that's the spy. Wait, which thing lets you make alliances? I forget. It's diplomatic service, right? Why can't I make an alliance with Katarja? I can make an alliance with Russia, but not Katarja. Is it because she offered me alliance? Maybe, who knows? I'm really confused. Is, is it because she has all of her alliances already? Oh, she hasn't unlocked alliances. Ah. Uh, um, would you, please, sir, would you also join my Hojo Takamune Golden Age War? Come on. Come on. Okay, he won't do it because he's friends with him. That's okay. Okay, so incidentally, we're also at war with Spain. Spain is the lesser scary person in this situation. So I think our main goal is to take out enemy units and districts as much as possible to prevent any potential counterattacking, again, as much as possible. So if we could do that successfully, uh, then this war will be a success. All we need to do is to capture one city and then we can continuously reinforce. Um, so if we can capture Fukuoka, that's a game changer. I think settling on the horses here, um, if I settle here, I hold down control, um, that captures all of these tiles. And if I settle on the horses, it captures all of these tiles. So two cities and I'll have full control of this island. Um, this is a nice little addition to the map modes mod. And then I'll probably find somewhere up here to settle to try to maximize my yield from there. We're doing a little bit of a late game colony push. Another work from Jaya Varman. Man, I'm finding all of the works and they're all mine, um, which in theory 
Sounds great, but they're all like ancient era artifacts. I have room for two more great works of writing. I think though my gold priority is on upgrading my army and then I'll go back to buying stuff. World's Fair, I got a bronze on that. So I get a civic boost, which is quite nice. Uh, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a little pillage and then we'll step forward. We're going to focus on gold pillages over anything else. Uh, this guy stepped into the water, which was a huge mistake because now I can deal with him. Uh, and then we can start blasting the city of Fukuoka. And it should go down pretty quick. I'm probably not going to be as highly prioritizing pillaging in this city, uh, at least until I bring this cavalry down that I have up here to the north. Once I bring these guys down to the south, then it'll be a little bit more pillage heavy. Let's finally get the oil online. So we should now be able to actually make real artillery. We have the cash in the bank. We just need to have the resources. Um, and Fukuoka uh, should fall very shortly. Maybe not before I can get a couple of extra pillages off, though. And that gold will help fuel me. We did get an archaeological museum in Zanzibar. We're going to hard build an archaeologist. Those arche uh, archaeological great works are actually really efficient. They're three culture and three... Uh, tourism. So really, really, really nice to pick those up in the late game. Really helping bump us up above that 200 tourism threshold. Um, there is no estimation on when we'll win the game because we're currently not earning enough tourists compared to Japan's defensive tourist generations. So we'll have to keep working on that. I think in order to beat them, yeah, we would need to be we would need to be a little bit higher. We would need to be in the thousand base tourism range, depending. So we got a ways to go. We got a ways to go. Uh, Bava Pura has a couple of options here. I would love to build a theater square in here. I don't have many great spots for a theater square. So I may as well just plonk one down there. It's an 11 turn build. Uh, we did manage to crank out a settler. I'll go settle on that oil to the north. I'm going to put all of these naturalists in tiles that don't need to be improved and I'll put them asleep for later use. They're basically in storage. I found an industrial era Hammurabi. I know I have a few Hammurabi industrial eras, but that's fine. Probably should have taken a Jaya Varman. It would have got me closer to a theming. Oh, well. Right, let us settle this little old desert city here that will eventually produce a bunch of tourism. We'll just go for the Monument Granary opener. Uh, we will place the aqueduct as we planned, and we will place the harbor as we planned in here as well. Just a slow and steady build the city up eventually sort of a deal. Mm, somebody's drilling a hole in the wall. I'm reminded, uh, like, I'm reminded of that classic Father Ted moment where he's like, God, what is, what is he possibly doing downstairs? It sounds like somebody's drilling holes in the wall. And they go downstairs and they find your man, Father Stack, literally drilling holes in the wall and it was just it's just one of those moments man where, where that happened none of these things matter i guess i would technically like the plus five loyalty uh she gets growth but less loyalty which is honestly great for me production cheaper this is very annoyingly timed mercenary companies because it means he's gonna get a whole bunch of units really easily and really cheaply and that is gonna have some consequences for me um yeah sure become artillery i've got three oil so boom, you are now artillery. There's plus two error score. And now this guy, oh, ho, 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 100 damage compared to the uh, solid 50 of some of these guys. So essentially doubling the combat power of my artillery that turn. Kaboom, kaboom, and kaboom. We'll take the city. Skabadoosh. We'll keep the city. We're not raising them. Now we will have a hard time holding loyalty in here. But we're going to do our damnedest to try. So we've already converted the city. That should give us a swing of six. If I plant Victor in this city, that'll give us a plus of eight. Because you can only get minus 20 from pressure from citizens. So as long as you can keep your grievances low and other potential effects high, um, you can buy quite a few turns here. So we've got eight turns to, to turn this war around. Um, but now we also have a foothold in enemy territory, which is a fantastic eventuality. We've we've got a healing location in Fukuoka. Uh, we actually managed to steal like a little bit of science, a little bit of faith, a little bit of culture per turn. So we have already begun chipping away at Japan's cultural dominance. We have the amphitheater over at Hariyalaya. Let's get working on an archaeological museum. Um, I think it would be worth it for me to put two turns into a granary because the city is at its growth cap and potentially a little bit of growth in here wouldn't go amiss. Oh, man, this, there's actually so much tourism potential in my empire. I'm really excited to really show you how much it can pop off. Let's go ahead and get the monument and the granary in here. The monument for the tiny trickle of loyalty, that'll help. I could also purchase the monument and that would actually buy me maybe another shred of a turn. But yeah, I, I, my empire has so much tourism potential coming down the pipe, five by five that um, it's going to make your head spin, dude, when I actually start going for the tourism victory. It is something I do find, like, 
I don't want to say annoying, but I find it, I don't know if the word distasteful is correct. It just feels weird, man, to be like solving all of your problems through violence, I guess. That's how it kind of feels to me. That like the most efficient route to victory in almost all of situations in civilization is to go to war with someone. Like if you're having a trouble with a dude, just kill him. Um, is that really the lesson we want people to take away from playing Civ? I don't know if it is. But just the way the gameplay mechanics work, killing is easy. Diplomatic service has been completed. We have access to Machiavellianism. More importantly, the Chancery. This is a building we probably should have had in our capital a long time ago. Uh, let's take the time to upgrade our units to the appropriate level. I want to look for gold pillages above all else. Hmm. A privateer in that city. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it easy. Now, this artillery has got range one, two, three. Wait, why have you got four range? What the hell? Jesus. Uh, step up onto that hill. Bring this great general forward and completely begin the obliteration of that city. I've got another great general in position. Slowly but surely, I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa. No, I'm walking my troops over is what I'm doing. You'd have to be very light to walk on sunshine. I don't, do I need fascism? I don't know if I do this game. I think I can skip fascism. I don't know if I need it. Go for more archaeologists. Uh, amphitheater in Malgium. Let's get those archaeological museums. There's, now, there probably isn't enough archaeological dig sites in the world to sustain the amount of archaeologists that I'm building, but that's not the important question. The important question is, am I ever going to build an art museum? And the answer is probably not. Okay, I really want this Ferris wheel. I'm up. Oh God, it's too expensive. Well, we've got the Eiffel Tower on the way. Maybe we could plug in skyscrapers. It's more important than settler production, I think. Shaving three turns off that Eiffel increases the probability that we get it, especially if I do a search for the Eiffel. Uh, that's the Eiffel. It's a, a lesser known tower, the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I'm the only one that I know is building it, but the thing is the AI gets a huge production boost, so I don't even know if that's good enough, but I just, it's it's one of the, the Eiffel Tower is one of those wonders that the difference between like how easy your game is if you get it and how difficult your game is is if you don't is just astronomical. And it's kind of similar to the Crystal Red and Tour, which I think I forgot to unlock. So let's go for mass media. All right, let's settle here on the elephants because we're setting up for a big old potential here. Um, Harbor is totally fine, but for now work on the monument at the granary. I will trade with Smolensk. Uh, this is Russia, right? No, it's Portugal. It looks like he conquered a Russian city, but that'll get me a tourism boost with Portugal. Portugal. Uh, Portugal, please do take my open borders in good faith. And I would also like to see if I could purchase some of your luxuries. I will sell off luxuries to Portugal. 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 Tuggle sounds like a rude word, and I can't explain why. You're such a tuggle. Uh, military emergency. I hope people don't vote this up. Who voted up? Spain, Japan, and Portugal. Annoying. Well, there's chemistry. Um, and that does lead to radio, as we predicted. I mean, it's fine. Um, blast the city. Blast the city. Take your pillage. Head this way. Um, you're going to upgrade to artillery. That's enough oil now. Now we're low on cash, but we will get that cash in due time. Positioning is a little bit awkward here with the units that I have, but it, we'll figure it out in time. It'll all remain possible and clear. Wouldn't mind conquering the city of Vigo. There is a nice national park right there. Um, if I take that over. Yeah, conquest is just... Conquest is the pathway to tourism. I feel like I've been going to war a lot more in my games recently. It's like I've just... I've given up on being pacifist. Um, I'm just like, yeah. It's like, how are you going to solve this problem, Potato? I'll kill a dude. And everyone looks on in horror. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> you brought me a problem. I brought you a solution. Oh, damn. Okay, I lost a cuirass here. Howie. So again, this is this is why we kill their units first. Because if we don't kill their units, they counterattack and they do all sorts of damage to you. Oh, I forgot to unlink the observation balloon. Uh, I'm going to buy a tank in Fukuoka. It's on about the same level as a Karasir army, but I should be able to do quite a bit more. And we got the lighthouse in Haradum. So I'll quickly grab a trader and a builder in here to keep that city expanding in terms of its uh, stoof. Portugal is attacking. Um, let's upgrade you to a field cannon. And oh, I really don't want to have to build boats. Oh, I know what I can do. Field cannons won't be super effective, but they'll do something. Settle you on oil. That's my third copy of oil. Looking great. Monument granary. You literally exist for no other reason than to acquire that oil. I will do a listening post in Japan for plus three combat strength. I would say I'm feeling pretty damn good about my current situation. Yeah, they killed my cuirass here because I got too much damage. It's all right. 
pop forward here, make sure that we kill all the enemy units. They all gotta die. All, right, all enemy units have been defeated. Let's go ahead. We'll buy ourselves a tank army here. Uh, we have the fate to do that. There we go. And now the war should progress, in theory, relatively easily. As long as we can get our hands on a bit of cash here from pillaging and stuff like that. Hoping these ironclads will BTFO. Will get BTFO, rather. Based. Not cringe. Not cool. All right, we got the boys heading down south. And yeah, man. I mean, things are looking... Everything's looking up. Millhouse. Ooh, there's actually a really nice national park. <gasps> no, it can't because it shares tiles with two cities. What about here? Nope, not until we have the... Well, actually, this could be a national park. It could be. Eiffel Tower would make it better too. Oh, this right here. This is definitely a national park. So we've got, you know, positions. We've got progress. I'm trying to just like identify places where I can squeak out a shred of tourism. Um, in the coming turns. All right, there's mass media. There's Crystal Redentor. Now, where am I going to build that? Let me let me have a look. Where's I got to find a high production city? I'd like eighty. Oh, there you go, Babylon. Eighty production. That's perfect. Oh, did somebody already build the Crystal? Not that I can tell. Do you literally have no hills? No, somebody's built it. Okay, somebody's built it, and I just haven't found it yet. That's all right. That's okay. It's probably Japan. We'll find it inside Japan's empire, and we'll take it from him. Okay, let's get that kill right there. Perfect. Let's get that kill right there. Perfect. Despite being outnumbered, our tank won the day. Um, field cannon, dead. City walls, dead. Mastercard, priceless. You become artillery. Do I buy another round of tanks? I probably should have two tank armies running around out there. I think three, three tanks plus six artillery. That should be good enough, I think. I've currently got one, two, seven artillery. So maybe, maybe two tanks, seven artillery. That's a good comp. A little bit light on the pillaging side of things, but should be fine. None of these civics are especially important to me. Ideology is good for extra spies, but who gives a damn about extra spies? I think we just grab capitalism to find out what's behind this unrevealed tech here. We're digging our way through the, the civic tree. I know the theater square is finished. We go for amphitheater, of course, naturally. Um, shipyard completed in Dermuti. Dermuti amount. Uh, I think we just grab the water park here for a little trickle of tourism. Just a trickle. I'll take Curator on Pingala for a little bit of extra tourism in the capital. Now, on any tiles with a forest that also doesn't have a national park pin, we can put lumber mills to give these cities at least some workable tiles. Um, this tank should be able to kill this city. Let's focus on what we can do here. I'll pop the obs balloon down a tile. That'll give you the range to hit a Mori. You pillage for money. You take the city. Honestly, we will keep that city. We're going to need another governor. This time I'll grab Magnus and I'll put him in Nagoya. Um, we're going to need to get rid of this pike and shot. We need to get rid of this guy. We also need to get rid of all this BS that's up here to the north causing us issues. You're going to become artillery. And I think now, based on our standards, things are looking kind of okay. We've already taken two cities. We're going to take our third next turn. Hopefully people now see the power of the Domri. I'll slowly build a zoo in here. Monument Granary, how have you not built those? I'm pretty sure city center buildings got boosted at some point in this game. I don't know how you haven't built those, man. I'm curious to see how much of a performance boost the AI would take if they just built those buildings. <laughs> just built them. Just, just, just don't want to find out. I'm really excited to get radio. I feel like I've been waiting for radio for a very long time. I would like to take a moment to appreciate Zanzibar and all its yield glory. I don't think we don't have a... Uh, we don't have a... Auckland this game but even so look at those beautiful beautiful coastal tiles two food one production one gold one science one culture one fate the only thing actually is there even a yield no there's no yield this has this tile makes at least one of every yield it's a beautiful beautiful tile and then if you take a look at some of these like this tile right here with the reef and then you can go even a step further with the fishing tiles oh oh and I haven't even researched colonialism which gives you extra food on those tiles have I oh I have Plus one production on fishing boats. Never mind. Archaeological museum is finished. Let's get another archaeologist. Uh, archaeologist is finished. Let's keep digging up those uh, great wax. I will take a Zanzibar ancient era. A little bit of diversity in my ancient era stockpile. Loyalty ain't perfect in here. Let's move our inquisitors forward. Um, hopefully they can make a difference. Boom. We have, in fact, managed to convert the city. Um, and it, in fact, has a possible place for me to get even more inquisitors. A bit of a military tribunal. Inquisition going on here. Let's combine these tanks together. 
Um, this tank I will use to capture the city. And then I will eat his soul. So what's our next goal? Takamatsu's loyalty is rough, but it's out of position to really be a problem. Because its loyalty will get fixed as we conquer more. Um, you need to become an artillerist. We need vision of Takamatsu, so that'll happen next turn. So for now, we'll just move slowly and carefully. Blasting where it makes sense. And just move the artillery to the front line. All right. Man, he built so many ironclads. I just, I can't explain this. We will get Huey, which is nice. We're going to inherit a lot of tourism by killing this guy. Um, I don't think I need research labs at this point in the game. I mean, I guess there is something to be said there. Uh, the city is powered. And this is worth 11 science per turn. Like, it's not an insignificant amount of science, but would I rather just not have more builders to improve my territory to get tourism? Like, is science really that important to me right now? I mean, I guess I'll pick it up because it's a really good building and it's one of my few science cities. But man, in Japan, in like the former territory previously known as Japan, we're going to be spamming out builders to retool the land to turn it into a tourism haven. That's right, we're, we're conquering your country and turning it into a ski resort. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dude, I know I, I love the idea of like a book about like hu humankind resisting like, an, uh, uh, you know, an invading alien force. And, you know, they're like they're trying to figure out like, why are they here? What do they want? Maybe we can maybe we can negotiate with them. And this is like it's just a, a vast, incredibly powerful empire that is just completely like not oblivious to the plight of humanity, but just completely like bureaucratically uncaring like those people from like the. Um, Oh shit, what was it? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where they built, were turning Earth into a highway? I guess it's kind of been done, but like a similar vibe, but just like they're turning it into a ski resort. Like this is just such a hedonistic, unsympathetic people that it's like you're, you're, you have been, I guess maybe a motorway is a bigger insult. I don't know. I just, I like the idea. It tickled my brain, the part of my brain that thinks. Here's a question philosophical question that I was sitting watching television uh, a little bit ago and posed to myself and then didn't really recover from it. Who is the thing that notices that you're thinking something? Is that the you? Is that me? If I notice I'm thinking about something, is that, is that who I am? Is that the, is that the part of me that's me? You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you're thinking about things, right? And it's just happening automatically. When I'm just like on, on autopilot, is that me? Or am I the thing that notices the autopilot? I don't know. It fucked me up earlier when I thought of that. Because I didn't have an answer. And even worse, I didn't know if it mattered. That was another shock to the cranium. It was like, does it matter? Why can't you shoot anything? You've got range. What if I swapped you? Right, we need to kill this field cannon. We'll take him out. Come on, you gotta, you gotta work with me here. What's your range? Oh, it's only three. Well, they get that private here then. Field cannon gone. And now we can blow up this field cannon. Because remember, the thing, the thing that stops our invasion isn't cities. It's units defending those cities. So if we take out the units, well, then our invasion is unstoppable, right? Uh, we need to convert the city again. And then we also need to convert the city again. Oh, we never converted that city. I see. I like how the Inquisitors have little hats on. I appreciate that detail. They got little... The Inquisition hats. I appreciate it. Uh, we could go for rocketry. Replaceable parts, I think, is the way to go. Uh, claim a great person, a great admiral. An admirable admiral. Uh, lowers my war weariness. That's actually a fantastic great admiral. Where did he appear? Admiral. Yep, 25% less war weariness. I will take that ability. We also got another archaeologist in the capital. Not to be confused with das capital. Those are two very different things. Um, so anchor thom. We could build the Broadcast Center. I think I would like to build the Chancery. That's three influence points per turn. That's a very valuable thing. I'm sad that someone else built my uh, Cristo Redentor. Let's keep going through those archaeological museums. Eventually, if we just gather up enough archaeological great works and stuff, we'll be able to theme something. Guarantee it. Um, I finished a settler in Borsipa, which means the expansion plans are going well. Do I want to take the time? Well, I guess... Technically build the thingy here. I think I'm going to take the time to go trader, builder, settler. Trader, builder, settler. Trader, builder, settler. Trader, builder, settler. Keep expanding the empire. It is finally time that we can start building those seaside resorts, get our era score, and start really... Uh, where's the tourism button? There we go, seven. Really cranking out that tourism. So they're worth four tourism right now. Eventually they'll be worth six when I get my 50% uh, boost from environmentalism and from computers, 25% uh, each. They could be worth another plus two from 
uh, Eiffel Tower, which would bring them up to nine. And then that can be multiplied out by all the people that I would be generating tourism against. So we're, we're on the curve now. We're up to 234 tourism. And that will start to grow significantly over the next period of time. There's a seaside resort for you. Now, the only thing about the seaside, like the seaside resort stuff, is that it's very micro intense. And what I mean by that is it just it's a lot of builder management, a lot of moving dudes around, a lot of clicking on dudes. Uh, get rid of him, plant a forest, seaside resort. So now we're already generating a decent amount of tourism from Japanese land. Um, 100 percent tourism to national park seems quite good. I'll take that. We'll make use of that this era, I assume. We need to get rid of the pike and shot. He's out of range for you. Pillage that. Step back a tile. You step forward a tile. You step forward a tile. Uh, why don't you go ahead and blast him? You blast him and then you blast the city and you blast the city. Pillage that. Step back. And then I'll buy a tank to combine with you. Let's have a look. Democracy. I think we'll go for the nuclear program. We don't necessarily care about democracy. I may as well finish researching fascism. We should know more about it. Really looking forward to that Eiffel Tower. In Babylon, I will quickly grab the research lab. Look, it's a little bit of... It's a trickle increase in science for a very small number of turns of investment. I mean, it's a large production investment, but it does result in a significant uh, increase in the science of my empire. And so it's kind of hard to not do it. The level of investment that I put in versus the level of what I get out seems quite a good ratio there. Boom. I'm not spending gold on this sector of my empire yet. Um, it would be nice to accelerate that tourism, but it's just not necessary. This is some wild ass shit that I'm going to delete, whatever this city is. It's unacceptable. I'll be going to war with Korea just for this city. I'll take a Jaya Varman industrial era um, and then I will take a Hammurabi classical. So how theming works is you want the color to be the same but the number to be different so we do have an ancient era themable coming up All right there's fascism we don't care about fascism anymore i'm done with fascism democracy is now my best friend so i'll take that promotion on you takamatsu is about to get bombarded um well it was never in the stone age i guess it was technically uh, but it's about to get bombarded back to rubble one more turn of bombarding in the city will fall Theatre Square in Bavapura. Let's go for the amphitheatre. I should totally now be spending my goal on purchasing... I can sell this off to you guys. That's fine. I should be purchasing great works of writing where available and applicable. As many as I can get. And then great works of artifact if anyone has them. Okay, what about great works of art? Yeah, I, I don't think I have room for art. Oh, but this is great. We have a ton of room for great writings. We're making decent tourism from here. 124 tourism. Uh, we got another archaeological museum. It's all, you know, it's all coming up Millhouse. Everything's coming up Millhouse. Now we could go for fascism. We're not going to. I think we're probably just going to chill until digital democracy. And the reason that we're going to chill until digital democracy is because I don't really see a whole lot of value in changing my government as it currently stands. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can snake over here and steal a couple of these coastal um, doodly boops. The um, ancient relics. Brilliant. We have access to seaports, which will give us a massive increase in our gold income in our coastal cities. Hydroelectric dams are quite nice. That's electricity for you. Uh, go ahead and continue to renew your diplomatic visibility. Now, we do want to kill this city. This is the turn. So let's prioritize taking it. Would have liked to have pillaged it a little bit more, but sometimes you don't always get what you want. Um, what's next on the agenda? Kyoto. Yeah, I think we should take out the capital now. So let's start posturing for that. Uh, we can begin damaging the walls this turn. We also need to get our Inquisitors over to Takamatsu to get control of that. We should also realistically get someone like Liang and pop her in there to give us a little bit of loyalty. You can pop over here and depredate this territory. I'm loving the power of this cavalry, although I would love to get him a proper set of cavalry to join up with him. Because right now he's a little bit vulnerable. We're just about to break the 300 uh, tourism mark. I don't know how many turns have passed, but we now have 24 tourists. And you can see Japan's tourism number is just running away. There's a reason I have to kill Japan, okay? Because, like, if you imagine the chance I take over 
everyone right now is like, it's actually pretty good, except for Japan and Korea. So these two have got to die. And there's two ways I can make that happen. One, I can kill Japan and then turn their land into a tourism engine. And two, I can just kill them. I spent a little bit of time updating the territory over here. Um, I believe this is a flatland tile. So this could also be a seaside resort. Dude, I forget where they are. Literally every time I open the screen, I forget where the seaside resort is. But like I've been slowly kind of going through my empire and sort of point out areas where I could squeak out a bunch of tourism. And... Um, it's a really fun process and we're slowly identifying places where we can we can settle, you know, national parks, we can make all sorts of stuff happen. National parks, seaside resorts, lumber mills. Remember, uh, woods give plus one appeal and so do lumber mills. Uh, well, rather, lumber mills don't give negative appeal, so there's no reason not to put lumber mills on your forests because it's just extra production. If only you could build ski resorts on mountains. It'd be a very helpful thing for me right now. Uh, there's honestly not that many mountains in my territory. So not many ski, not much ski resort potential. But yeah, I, I definitely feel like, this, look how much micromanagement I have to do just to get all of these tiles into the position that I want. And I'm not even, like, I haven't even begun to like look at tiles like over here, for example. Japan is starting to beg me for peace, uh, which is natural what the AI does when they start like completely losing a war. I've got a thousand combat strength. I've got 300 science. I've got 400 culture. Um, I am the dominant power in this world as it currently stands and uh, they should fear me. It is the correct move to be terrified of me because of the sheer amount of power that I hold in this current moment. Okay, let's go ahead and blast you. I'll turn you. That's my final artillery piece. Uh, let's start blasting the city of Kyoto. Can you, sorry, uh, can you, good sir, can you reach the city? You can. Excellent. You can just about not reach the city. Maybe you could sweep around and go for that pillage next turn and then you can blast the city. There we go. We might squeak off a little pillage. Uh, go ahead and... Oh, not enough movement. Right, because you are not... Oh, Crystal Redditor! It is in a city. That's actually... This is such a huge, huge wonder for me to steal. And it's actually going to require a little bit of explanation. So let's 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 go into the fog of war, right? Let's have a look here. Let's imagine this tile right here. This is the perfect seaside resort. It produces plus four appeal. Let's imagine this tile had plus four appeal, right? That's the baseline amount of appeal that you need to make a seaside resort. You can see here, this seaside resort here is making four appeal. Because it has four appeal, it's generating four gold. So the gold gets converted, the appeal gets converted into gold and tourism. Now, we can kind of confirm all that by looking at seaside resort. Now, that tourism, okay, 100% tourism from appeal. That is applied to every other save of the game. So in a standard eight player game, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players. Uh, you can't generate tourism against yourself. So this would get multiplied by seven at some point, okay? That's one of the multipliers, okay? That is just inherent to the game, that whatever this is, this gets multiplied by seven. Now, it doesn't just get multiplied by seven, because the maximum possible multiplier you can have against another player is 0 0.75 for a trade route, 0 0.25, uh, let, me, let me do this out of line actually. So 0 0.75 for a trade route, because you get 25% for a trade route. And that's not even counting gray people. I'm not even talking about some of these gray people here that give you extra turret. Like this is another, if you really want another 50%, it's in there, right? But I'm not even talking about that. We'll include it just because. So like there's another 0.5% from trade routes. Um, and then that's just, that's, this is just trade routes. So this number can get multiplied by what? Uh, 2.25, I think. Which means if you take this, it's four times seven times 2.25. That means a single seaside resort can make 63. Um, how do I set this up? This will be the symbol for trade, the circle. That means a single seaside resort after multipliers, just including trade, can get you, because remember, one is always the base multiplier. So you, you add these onto the base multiplier. It can get you 63 tourism per turn, which is about a tourist every 25 turns, okay? Uh, because that's, uh, it's basically, the, how the math works out is it's 1600 divided by 63. Uh, the 1600 comes from the number... Um, because you take the number of players in the game multiplied by 200 and that's how much international tourism you need to generate in, against a player to steal a tourist. Okay, so this would take it about 25 turns to get this. It's not exact, it's just, that's, that's like, uh, it's about, it's about 25 turns. Now, 
that is literally me just taking into account literally just trade routes. What if we add open borders into this mix? Okay. Um, or better yet, what if we add Crystal Red and Tor? Right. So Crystal Christo Red and Tor, if you don't know, generates 100% tourism from seaside resorts. So it takes this plus four and it times it by two. Right. It becomes four times two equals eight. No, not 48. Sorry. It becomes eight. And then that 63 number, that just becomes 126. Right. That's just a ridiculous and insane, insane amount of tourism. Okay. Now, what if we add Eiffel Tower into this, right? Eiffel Tower adds plus two appeal to every tile. That would mean the base appeal of this tile would be six. Okay. That gets multiplied by two. It becomes 12. Oh my God. All of a sudden, this is 189 um, tourism per turn. You divide that by 1600 and you're getting a tourist every 8.5 turns from a single seaside resort every 8.5 turns you are getting a tourist okay now imagine if you had 10 of these if you had 100 seaside resorts okay we're not done yet so we've taken into account the four base right from it being a seaside resort and then we've taken care of the plus two from the eiffel tower and then we take care of the times two from the crystal red and tour that gets us to 12. now don't forget there's another multiplier that we can add to this we can add another 1.5 from tech, uh, sorry, another 1.25 from technology, the computer tech, and another 1.25 from a civic, namely the um, environmentalism civic, which means the way all these multiplications work together, you've got four plus two times two times 1.5. That's the way that these two numbers work out because these are additive multipliers. Uh, the way that it works out, these add together to be 1.5. I, uh, it's not represented perfectly here, in the, in the way that I'm doing this maths. So you get six times two multiplied by 1.5, which gets you 18 base tourism, okay? And only taking into account potential trade route yields, you could be making 283.5 tourism per turn, which is on average a single seaside resort making you a tourist every 5.6 turns. Now remember, th that's how powerful the additive multipliers are, okay? How all these multipliers work together. I haven't even added in like things like open borders uh, and other potential multipliers that you can add onto that. So like the efficiency of having Eiffel Tower plus seaside resorts plus good trade route tech plus environmentalism and computers means that a single seaside resort like gets you a tourist every five turns in a seven player game. Now I'm only going to have five players, maybe four, because I plan on killing two of these guys. But even so, um, that'll be worth it because I'll be cutting down the total amount of tourists I need to make. I hope that I hope that like little tutorial on why seaside resorts are so busted um, was useful. I hope it was illuminating. I hope it gave you a better understanding and appreciation of how tourism multipliers work. Uh, and I hope you just understand the game better as a result of that little chat that we did. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Let's go go for that pillage. I think all of my Domries are now the proper type of unit. Blast Kyoto will go for a pillage there. You step out of the city. I'm going to Faith by a Cavalry. <gasps> it's in the wrong place. Get into the water and eat his soul. Uh, go ahead and capture Kyoto. I'm taking his capital. Get those Inquisitors over to try and convert the city. Didn't quite convert it, but we did break the religion. Uh, we will be going for Asaka next, so I'll need a scout. I guess I can I could do sc scout tillery. I don't see a reason not to scout with my arty. Bring the observation balloon over. Uh, we'll take out Asaka just because it's in position. Plus, it also has a couple of wonders. Um, which again, that'll help us with our victory condition. Gifu, Shizuoka, and Okayama should all fall next. And then we just got to get over here and blow up Atsu and Hakodate. Now, this will give me a bunch of grievances with people. People are going to be mad, especially Japan. But look at that, 75 grievances, askers? Who cares, dude? I could probably peace out Japan after taking over his entire empire. Um, I won't do that. I might do that. We'll see. So I definitely want to pick up professional sports for the ski resort because that's a nice little trickle of tourism. It's four tourism per turn, which isn't a huge amount, um, but it is. It's again, remember, every little squeak of tourism that I can get out of my empire potentially shaves turns off this victory. And so that's why it's all about the efficiency, you know? Um, Yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.